The iceberg videos covered a lot of topics but they missed the one on yoga because it is still kind of unknown and some people have tasted the dark and light of its existence. So with the help of the internet and 4 years of experience I created this yoga iceberg ranging from the well known and widely practiced to the more esoteric and less mainstream. This journey promises to be nothing short of an exploration into the soul of yoga itself. Starting with the first tier, we have the most well known and practiced form, Hatha Yoga. This is what most people refer to when they talk about yoga. It's a practice that unites the mind, body and spirit through physical postures, asanas, breathing exercises, pranayama, body gestures, mudra, energy lux bandha, and internal cleansing shatkarma. Originally, it aimed to strengthen the body, purify it, and awaken the spiritual energy called kundalini through energy channels and chakras known as laya yoga. The word hatha can mean forceful or the balance of sun and the moon. In the west, most yoga classes are based on hatha yoga, emphasizing physical exercises. Hatha yoga traces its roots to tantra yoga developed by the Nath Siddhas. The main ancient text is the Hatha Yoga Padipika written in the 15th century. Modern Hatha Yoga gained popularity in the 1920s with teachers like Krishna Masharya. It has various styles and schools each emphasizing different aspects of the practice. The Hatha Yoga Padipika describes 15 poses but their names and how you do them have changed over time in modern yoga. It's interesting that some of these poses are for sitting and meditating while others are challenging and require more skill. A typical Hatha Yoga class is gentle, slow and suitable for beginners, often including meditation and relaxation. Vinyasa Yoga including popular forms like Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, Power Yoga, Baptist Yoga, Vija Mukti Yoga, Vinyasa Flow Yoga, Power Vinyasa Yoga and Core Strength Vinyasa Yoga trace its roots to Krishna Masharya's innovative aerobic style developed in the early 20th century at the Mysore Palace. Krishna Masharya claimed to learn this system from the ancient Yuga Karunta, a document attributed to Vamana Rishi. However, the original manuscript was lost and Krishna Masharya's approach was dynamic, adapting to individual students' needs. His people, Joys, learned a fixed sequence leading to the creation of Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, possibly for practical teaching purposes. Krishna Masharya used Vinyasa broadly to mean a sequence for approaching a pastor and as a stage in asana execution. Joyce, on the other hand, used Vinyasa more narrowly to represent linking movements between asanas, creating a flow in meditation. In modern Vinyasa Yoga, as taught by Sharath Joyce, breath is coordinated with transition movements. Specific sequences such as Chaturanga Dandasana, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, and Adho Mukha Svanasana are repeated to link various asanas. Sharath Joyce defines Vinyasa as a system of breathing and movement. Ashtanga Yoga, meaning the eight limbs of yoga, is a classical form classified by Patanjali in his Yoga Sutras. These eight limbs are Yamas, abstinences, Niyama, observances, Asana, posture, Pranayama, breathing, Pratyahara, withdrawal, Dharana, concentration, Dhyana, meditation, and Samadhi, absorption. The eight limbs follow a sequence from external practices to inner exploration. The asana or yoga posture serves as a steady and comfortable foundation for practicing the limbs from breathing exercises to deep absorption. Patanjali defines yoga in the second sutra as the inhibition of the modifications of the mind. It involves restraining the mind from various forms and achieving a state where the true self is revealed. The eight limbs meanings are yamas abstinences, ethical rules including non-violence, Silence, truthfulness, non-stealing, chastity, and non-avarice. Niyama observances, virtuous habits and observances including purity, contentment, persistence, self-discipline, and contemplation of the divine. Asana posture, the steady and comfortable physical posture for meditation. Pranayama breath control, consciously regulating the breath to enhance the life force. Pratyahara withdrawal, drawing awareness from external objects to experience inner freedom. Dharna concentration, holding the mind into a specific inner state or object. Dhyana meditation, contemplating and reflecting on the foxed object or concept. Samadhi absorption, a state of profound union and trance where the meditator and the object of meditation become one. The ultimate goal is Kaivalya, the discernment of true self, separate from the cognitive apparatus, leading to liberation from suffering. The practice involves progressing through these limbs, cultivating self-awareness and achieving a state of consciousness free from external distractions.
Iyengar Yoga created by Biki S. Iyengar emphasizes precision, alignment, and detail in yoga postures asanas. Using props like belts and blocks, it focuses on proper alignment to reduce the risk of injury or strain. Biki S. Iyengar learned yoga from Krishna Masharya and gradually introduced it as exercise. His best-selling book, Light on Yoga, in 1966, played a key role in popularizing Iyengar Yoga, especially in the West. Iyengar Yoga stands out for its precision, specific sequences for asanas, and use of props. Classes are precise, with corrections actively explained. Pastors are held for a longer time, promoting muscle relaxation and awareness. Props aid students, allowing a wider range of poses. Iyengar Yoga introduces beginners to standing poses or leon, emphasizing careful attention to detail. It diversifies sequencing and choice of asanas, reducing the risk of injury. Inversions like headstand and shoulder stand are highlighted, with a focus on caution and mindfulness. Iyengar teachers undergo rigorous training, completing introductory, intermediate, and senior levels. From 2019, a minimum of six years of practice is required before assessment. Practitioners in the West can attend Ramamani Iyengar Memorial Institute in Pune after eight years of practice. In 2019, the Iyengar National Association of the United States updated its ethics standards based on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali after the certifying a senior teacher for sexual assaults. Iyengar Yoga includes an invocation to Patanjali, recognizing him for providing yoga, grammar, and medicine for the well-being of the mind, speech, and body. In summary, Iyengar Yoga is characterized by its attention to detail, precise alignment, and innovative use of props, making it accessible to practitioners of all levels. Bikram Yoga is a type of hot yoga created by Bikram Kudhuri in the early 1970s. It involves a fixed sequence of 26 postures practiced in a room heated to 105 degrees 41 Celsius with 40% humidity, mimicking the climate of India. Kodhuri's teaching style was intense and the classes gained popularity, reaching a peak of 1,650 studios in over 40 countries in 2006. Kodhuri, born in Calcutta in 1945, began teaching yoga in the US in 1971. He developed the 26 posture sequence based on B.C. Ghosh's teachings. The yoga style quickly attracted celebrity students. Bikram yoga classes run for 90 minutes, consisting of 26 postures, including asanas and pranayama. The room is captured with mirrors and the instructor might adjust students' postures. The intense style is known for its heated environment and standardized dialogue for teachers. Godhuri's charismatic teaching and intense philosophy contributed to rapid growth. By 2006, there were 1,650 Bikram Yoga studios worldwide. However, the franchise declined with 330 studios in the US and 600 globally by 2012. Studies suggest benefits like improved strength, joint motion, and balance. Adverse events including rosacea, a psychotic episode, and hyponatremia have been reported. Kudhuri attempted to copyright Bikram Yoga in 2011 but faced legal challenges. The US Copyright Office clarified that yoga pastors couldn't be copyrighted as claimed by Kudhuri. Kudhuri faced lawsuits for sexual harassment, assault, and other misconduct. Fleeing to India in 2016, he left Bikram Yoga Incorporation to others. The allegations were explored in the 2019 Netflix documentary Bikram Yogi Guru Predator. In summary, Bikram Yoga is known for its heated environment, fixed sequence for pastors, and controversy surrounding its founder Bikram Kudhuri. I wouldn't be the person who I am today without him. Moving to the second tier. Kundalini Yoga is a practice rooted in Tantra, focusing on the energy called Kundalini located within the body, often at the navel or base of the spine. In some traditions, this energy is considered dormant until activated through yoga, ascending through the central channel for spiritual growth. Variations exist, with some schools believing multiple active Kundalini energies are present in different body parts. Adherents associate Kundalini with the divine feminine power, Shakti, and Kundalini Yoga is influenced by Hinduism, Shaktism, and Tantra schools. The term Kundalini has historical roots, with Sanskrit meanings like circular and snake, evolving into the concept of coiled energy. Modern Kundalini Yoga, emerging in the 20th century, combines Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga, and Shakti yoga, incorporating practices like mantra, tantra, and meditation. Practitioners aim to awaken kundalini energy progressing through the body's chakras. 
Kundalini is viewed as a transformative force that when activated can lead to spiritual realization and personal growth. The practice involves various techniques including breathwork, meditation and specific postures emphasizing navel activity and spine engagement. Sivananda Saraswati and Yogi Bhajan played influential roles in popularizing Kundalini Yoga. The latter introduced it to the United States in 1968 blending yogic postures, tantric theories and Sikh mantras to create his version. Kundalini Yoga principles revolve around awakening spiritual energy at the spine's base, channeling it through chakras for holistic growth. It integrates Bhakti Yoga for devotion, Shakti Yoga for power, and Raja Yoga for mental control. Daily practice is considered a practical technology for realizing one's creative potential and fulfilling life purpose with the recommendation to cultivate detachment before arousing Kundalini. The practice involves kriyas, meditations, and breath techniques to raise awareness and prepare the body and mind for Kundalini energy. Controversies surround modern Kundalini Yoga with accusations of cult-like practices, financial and sexual abuse and claims that it deviates from traditional Sikhism. Despite controversies, many find value in Kundalini Yoga as a transformative and spiritually enriching practice. Yin Yoga is a slow-paced style that focuses on holding poses for longer periods compared to other styles. It incorporates principles from traditional Chinese medicine, stimulating the body's meridians similar to Nadis in Hatha Yoga. This yoga form applies moderate stress to connective tissues aiming to enhance joint circulation and flexibility. Founded in the late 1970s by martial arts expert Poli Zink, Yin Yoga has gained popularity in North America and Europe through teachers like Paul Greeley and Sarah Powers. The practice is not meant to be standalone routine but is often used as a complement to more active forms of yoga and exercise. Rooted in the concepts of yin and yin, yin yoga seeks balance in the body by targeting both stable, immobile aspects yin and changing active elements yang. The practice involves specific sequences of poses to stimulate meridians, promoting health and enlightenment. It differs from conventional yoga by emphasizing long-held, passive poses with minimal muscular exertion. Yin yoga sessions typically consist of a series of floor poses that focuses on the lower part of the body, holding each pose for an extended duration, around 5 minutes. During these holds, instructors might share insights, stories, or reflections to deepen the meditative experience. The primary objectives of yin yoga include improving flexibility, restoring a fuller range of motion, and cultivating inner stillness. While it shares similarities with conventional yoga poses, yin yoga has its unique approach and is known for its meditative and reflective aspects. Restorative yoga is a gentle practice involving longer-held asanas poses, often supported by props like blankets. It aims to relax the body, reduce stress, and prepare for pranayama breath control. Sessions focus on a small number of poses, each held for an extended period, sometimes up to 20 minutes. The prolonged holds, supported by props such as blankets and blocks, aim to fully relax muscles and promote joint circulation. Originating from Bikki S. Iyengar's teachings, Yudit Lazatar popularized restorative yoga by incorporating Iyengar yoga's asanas and prop usage. Lazatar recommends specific props for practice but suggests substitutes for home use. She details 12 asanas in her book, Restore and Rebalance, offering variations for a total of 20 poses. Restorative yoga differs from a nap or stretching, emphasizing natural openings in the body, breath, and mind without strain. Cindy Lee and other Others suggest sequences like reclining bound angle pose, legs up the wall, and child pose all using support. Cindy Lee links restorative yoga to the stress of modern life addressing chronic fight or flight responses. She sees it as a middle path between active and passive states, fostering receptiveness. The practice is praised for its healing benefits including cautious relaxation, tension release, triggering the relaxation response, and cultivating inward focus. Reception of restorative yoga has been positive, with practitioners finding it beneficial for healing the mind and the body. It is recommended for those facing burnout or dealing with injuries, stress, or illness. Not to be confused with yin yoga, restorative yoga is geared toward those seeking recovery with smaller classes for individualized attention, while yin yoga is aimed at healthy practitioners in larger classes. 
Claimed benefits of restorative yoga include conscious relaxation, identifying tension in the body, triggering the relaxation response, and practicing introspection by shifting focus from doing to being. Overall, restorative yoga offers a gentle and supportive approach to relaxation and well-being. In the third tier, Jiva Mukti Yoga is a unique style founded by David Life and Sharon Ganon in 1984, blending physical, ethical, and spiritual elements. It combines a vigorous vinyasa-based practice with adherence to five central tenets, Shastra, Scripture, Bhakti, Devotion, Ahimsa, Nonviolence, Niyada, Music, and Dhyana, Meditation. The method also advocates for animal rights, veganism, environmentalism, and social activism. Jiva Mukti Yoga was co-founded in 1984 in New York by Sharon Ganon and David Life, who incorporated Sivananda and Ashtanga Yoga teachings. Over the years, it gained popularity, and by 1998, it became a thriving yoga center with a focus on spirituality and physical practice. Shiva Mukti Yoga has expanded globally, with centers in the United States, Germany, Spain, Norway, Australia, Russia, and Mexico. The name Shiva Mukti is derived from Sanskrit, where Shiva refers to the individual living soul and mukti signifies liberation from the cycle of death and rebirth. Those jiva mukti implies liberation while living. Shastra scripture involves the study of key yoga texts written in Sanskrit including the yoga sutras of Panjali, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads. Bhakti devotion emphasizes devotion and humility in yoga practices with the goal of achieving God realization. Ahimsa nonviolence promotes the practice of nonviolence and compassion, extending not only to humans but also to all animals' life, advocating ethical vegetarianism. Niyada music focuses on inner listening, chanting, and elevated music based on the idea that everything, including humans, consists of sound, vibrations, niyada. Dhyana meditation involves being still and observing one's own thoughts aiming to detach from mental identification. Meditation is a crucial part of all Jiva Mukti Yoga classes. Jiva Mukti Yoga founders and teachers have authored several books including Jiva Mukti Yoga, Practices for Liberating Body and Soul, The Art of Yoga, Yoga and Vegetarianism, The Diet of Enlightenment, and others. Jiva Mukti Yoga has main centers in the United States, Germany, Spain, Norway, Australia, Russia, and Mexico with affiliate centers in various countries. They also established the wild woodstock, Jiva Mukti Forest Sanctuary, a nature preserve in the Catskill Mountains. Jiva Mukti Yoga faced controversy in 2016 due to accusations of sexual harassment against one of its senior teachers. This led to discussions about the school's culture, including allegations of spiritual abuse and secrecy through the use of non-disclosure agreements. Despite controversies, Jiva Mukti Yoga remains a globally recognized and practiced style known for its blend of physicality, spirituality, and ethical principles. Acroyoga combines yoga and acrobatics. It involves partner and group acrobatics where one person is lifted, drawing inspiration from circus arts, cheerleading, and dance acrobatics. There are three main roles. The base provides support, flyer, the one lifted, and spotter ensures safety. Two main styles are elbacing on the ground and standing upright. Learning acroyoga requires strength, flexibility, and technique training. Poses vary from static to dynamic, and sessions often include warm-ups, partner flows, inversions, and acrobatics. Acroyoga has a history dating back to 1938, and various schools, with Acroyoga Montreal and Acroyoga International being among the pioneers. The practice has evolved focusing on therapeutic flying, yoga, and acrobatics. Aerial yoga is a unique type that merges traditional poses with the use of an aerial hammock. Carmen Cortes and Michael Dottignac pioneered the use of hammocks in the early 20s. The hammock, supporting up to 300 kg, is suspended from the ceiling and connected at a height set by the user. There are two installation styles for different effects, two anchor points for stability or one anchor point for increased motion range. The hammock acts like a swing, assisting with forward and backward bends, making challenging yoga postures more accessible. Aerial yoga is claimed to offer health benefits by strengthening and rehabilitating muscles and joints while decompressing the spine. Though not clinically studied, anecdotal evidence suggests positive impacts on emotional, psychological, and spiritual well-being. To the fourth tier, Bhakti Yoga, also known as Bhakti Marga, is a spiritual path in Hinduism centered on loving devotion to a personal deity. 
It is one of the three classical paths to moksha, alongside Jnana Yoga, the path of wisdom, and Karma Yoga, the path of virtuous action. In Bhakti Yoga, practitioners express devotion and love for a chosen personal god, which can include deities like Ganesha, Krishna, Shiva, or others. This tradition has ancient roots, mentioned in texts like the Shvitajvatara Upanishad, and extensively discussed in the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhakti Marga gained prominence during the Bhakti movement, starting around the mid-first millennium CE in South India. This movement was led by the Saivya Nayanars and Vaisnava Alvars, influencing Bhakti poetry and devotion across India. The term Bhakti is derived from the Sanskrit root Bhaj, meaning participate or devote. Bhakti Yoga is considered a path of divine love mysticism, emphasizing an intimate connection with the divine through concentrated focus on the deity. The Bhagavad Gita describes Bhakti Yoga as a devotee's love and devotion to a personal god, distinguishing it from Jnana Yoga, path of wisdom, and Karma Yoga, path of virtuous action. The highest level of Bhakti is driven by pure love for the divine. Major traditions within Bhakti Yuga include Shaivism, worship of Shiva, Vaishnavism, worship of Vishnu or avatars like Krishna and Rama, and Shaktism, worship of the goddess Shakti. Panchayatana Puja, a form of Bhakti in Smarta tradition, involves simultaneous worship of multiple deities. The Shaiva Siddhanta tradition emphasizes the love and devotion to Shiva, promoting ethical living, service, and yoga practices. Shakticism Bhakti involves devotion to the goddess, emphasizing the oneness and unity between the devotee and the divine. Vaishnavism has historical associations with Bhakti Yoga, with devotees expressing love for Vishnu or his avatars like Krishna. The Shaitanya Charitamrita outlines nine types of Bhakti Sadhana, such as listening to Krishna's stories, praising, remembering, and surrendering to the Divine. Bhakti Yoga is also discussed by Mihir Baba, who sees it as a crucial practice leading to God-realization, emphasizing worship as an art guided by high ideals of philosophy and spirituality. Yoga Nidra, also known as yogic sleep, is a state of consciousness that exists between wakefulness and sleep, often induced through guided meditation. While the term is mentioned in ancient Hindu texts like the Upanishad and the Mahabharata, its modern form as guided meditation technique originated in the 19th and 20th centuries in the West. In ancient times, references to Yoga Nidra appear in the Mahabharata and the Divi Mahatmya, associating it with Lord Shivano's transcendental sleep between the cycles of the universe. In medieval practices, Yoga Nidra is linked to meditation in Shaiva and Buddhist Tantras, and later it becomes synonymous with Samadhi in Hatha Yoga and Raja Yoga Textus. The modern usage of Yoga Nidra as a guided relaxation technique stems from Western relaxationism practices introduced by figures like Annie Payson Kahl and Edmund Jacobson. Dennis Boyes in 1973, followed by Satyananda Saraswati in 1976, popularized the technique. Satyananda's multi-stage Yoga Nidra involves stages such as internalization, resolve, rotation of consciousness, breath awareness, manifestation of opposites, creative visualization, repeated resolve, and externalization. Swami Rama, Ricard Miller, and others have contributed to the spread of Yoga Nidra worldwide. Ricard Miller, in particular, developed integrative restoration, I rest methodology, which has been used by the US Army to aid in the recovery of soldiers dealing with post traumatic stress disorder PTSD. The practice involves deep relaxation, with the practitioners becoming increasingly aware of the inner world through verbal instructions. It differs from meditation as it requires no singular focus, but rather maintains a state of conscious sleep with four senses internalized. Despite its popularity, scientific evidence for the effectiveness of Yoga Nidra is limited. Some studies suggest potential benefits, such as increased endogenous dopamine release, improved heart rate variability, and reductions in blood pressure. However, more research is needed to establish its medical benefits conclusively. In recent times, concerns about the commercialization and abuse within organizations promoting Yoga Nidra have been prompted some yoga teachers to advocate for an independent and history-aware approach to the practice. Moving to the fifth tier, Sivananda Yoga is a spiritual system founded by Swami Vishnu Divananda, inspired by the teachings of his guru Swami Sivananda. The system incorporates various aspects of yoga, including asanas, yoga postures, but it goes beyond a mere physical exercise system. The primary goal of Sivananda Yoga is to propagate the ancient yogic knowledge for health, peace, unity in diversity, and self-realization. 
which follows the yoga of synthesis, synthesizing the principles of the four classical paths of yoga, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga and jnana yoga. The five points of yoga in the Sivananda system as compiled by Vishnu Divananda are proper exercise, asana, enhancing flexibility, strength and youthfulness through yoga pastors, proper breathing, pranayama, connecting the body to the solar plexus to overcome stress and depression through deep breathing, proper relaxation, savasana, relieving the body of stress symptoms and developing resistance against external stress factors, proper diet, following a vegetarian diet with sattvic foods and avoiding rajasic and tamasic foods, positive thinking and meditation, vidanta and dhyana, eliminating negative thoughts patterns and achieving inner peace through meditation. The practice of Sivananda Yoga involves a systematic approach to 12 basic asanas, starting with Savasana and Pranayama, followed by the standard program of the 12 basic postures. The emphasis is on mastering these foundational asanas before progressing to more advanced variations. The organizational structure of Sivananda Yoga has faced controversy and allegations of sexual abuse and rape by its founder, Swami Vishnu Devananda, as well as other high-level leaders. These allegations became public in 2019, leading to discussions about accountability within the organization. Sivananda Yoga is known for its emphasis on Karma Yoga, the path of selfless service. The philosophy is rooted in the belief that serving others is essential for opening the heart, diminishing selfishness and egoism, and understanding the unity underlying all of creation. Despite the controversies surrounding the organization, Sivananda Yoga continues to be practiced globally, and many other yoga organizations such as the Divine Life Society, Bihar School of Yoga, Integral Yoga, and the Shinmaya Mission follow Sivananda's teachings in their own yoga systems. Jnana Yoga, a path in Hinduism for spiritual liberation, focuses on the path of knowledge or path of self-realization. It is one of the three classical paths, with the other two being Karma Yoga, path of action, and Bhakti Yoga, path of love and devotion to a personal God. Jnana Yoga involves seeking knowledge through questions like who am I, what am I? Practitioners study with a guru, meditate and reflect to gain insight into the nature of the self-atman and its connection to the metaphysical concept of Brahman in Hinduism. The term jnana means knowledge in Sanskrit and the practice leads to moksha, spiritual liberation. It encompasses both self-consciousness and intellectual understanding. Jnana Yoga is discussed in ancient Hindu scriptures like the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita. The path encourages introspection, meditation, and philosophical reflection. In the Upanishads, Jnana Yoga aims for the realization of the oneness between the individual self-Atman and the ultimate self-Brahman. It's not mutually exclusive with other paths, as a practitioner may also engage in Karma or Bhakti Yoga. In the Bhagavad Gita, Jnana Yoga is referred to as Buddha the yoga, focusing on self-realization. Adi Shankara, an Advaita philosopher, prioritized Jnana Yoga for knowledge of the Absolute Brahman, while other traditions might emphasize it differently. The path involves behavioral qualifications like discrimination, dispassion virtues, and a longing for liberation. Practices include hearing, thinking, and meditation, aiming for correct knowledge that eliminates errors related to self and ultimate reality. Various Hindu traditions including Shaivism, Vaishnavism, and Shaktism incorporate Jnana Yoga with their unique perspectives. The aim and practice may vary, but the common thread is the pursuit of knowledge for spiritual liberation. The sixth tier, Raja Yoga also known as Royal Yoga, serves both as the goal and method of yoga according to Sanskrit texts. The term gained prominence in the 19th century when Swami Vivekananda interpreted the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali in his book Raja Yoga. It has also been called Astanga Yoga, Royal Union, Sahaja Marg, and Classical Yoga. The term Raja means chief or best of its kind, indicating the highest form of yoga practice. In ancient texts, Raja Yoga denoted the highest state of yoga leading to Samadhi. It is discussed in works like the Yoga Tattva Upanishad and the Tatariya Yoga Sastra, which present it as one of the five methods of yoga, along with Hatha Yoga, Mantra Yoga, Laya Yoga, and Shiva Yoga. Swami Vivekananda's interpretation linked Raja Yoga to the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, distinguishing it from the Hatha Yoga Pratipika, which presents a different perspective. The method of meditation followed under Sahaj Mark, also known as Heartfulness, aligned with the Raja Yoga system of practice. In Shaivism, particularly in the Amanaska text, Raja Yoga is described as a path to reach the inner king, the supreme self, leading to a state of undisturbed bliss. Various terms such as Amanaska, Unmani, and Sahaj 
are synonymous with the Raja Yoga goal. The historical development of Raja Yoga involves its listing as one of many types of yoga in medieval texts like the Sarvanga Yoga Pradepeka. Swami Vivekananda's interpretation equating it with the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali introduced a modern understanding of Raja Yoga. The historical transmission of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras to Persia and the Arabian Peninsula in the early 11th century by the scholar Alberni is noted. The decline of yoga philosophy during the Islamic period in India and its preservation by sadhus are also mentioned. Comparisons with Buddhism highlight similarities between Raja Yoga and Buddhist practices, noting shared concepts and approaches to solve fundamental problems such as suffering and understanding reality. Both systems emphasizes the cultivation of concentrated states and the exploration of the self through direct investigation of reality. Tantra originates in the Indian subcontinent around the first millennium CE with roots in both Hinduism and Buddhism. In Hinduism, it's known as Mantra Marga, Path of Mantra, and in Buddhism, particularly Vajrayana traditions, it's referred to as Mantrayana, Mantra Vehicle, or Gohya Mantra, Secret Mantra. The term Tantra broadly means a systematic text or practice in Indian traditions influencing various Eastern religions like Jainism, Tibetan Bon tradition, Taoism, and Japanese Shinto. The word itself means loom, warp, weave in Sanskrit, reflecting the weaving of traditions into a text or practice. Tantra's meaning evolved over time, from warp in the Rig Veda to doctrine, rule, theory, method in later texts. Modern definitions vary, with some emphasizing cosmic observances, while others view it as mechanistic rituals. Although Tantra has been linked to sex, this association is considered misleading. The rise of Tantra around 600 CE involved ascetic practitioners engaging in unconventional practices. In Influenced by both Buddhism and Shaiva texts, Tantra transformed local deity cults, introducing fierce deities between the 5th and 8th centuries CE. The Tantric age, 8th to 14th centuries, marked Tantra's peak and spread across India, Kashmir, Nepal, Bengal, Tibet, Indonesia, and China. In the 10th century, Tantric practices matured and texts proliferated. By the 11th century, Shaiva and Buddhist Tantra evolved into more philosophical forms. In Hinduism, Bhakti movements from the 15th century overshadowed Tantric practices practices, but Shaiva Tantra persisted. In Buddhism, Tantric practices thrived in Indo-Tibetan Buddhism and Japanese Shingon. During Hindu modernism in the 19th and 20th centuries, Tantric practices were reframed. Hindu Hatha Yoga, originating from Shaiva Tantric texts, shifted focus to health and relaxation. In conclusion, Tantra emerged around 600 CE, influenced by both Buddhist and Shaiva contexts. It reached its peak during the Tantric age and later evolved into more philosophical forms. While facing setbacks in certain regions, Tantric traditions continue to influence Hindu and Buddhist practices today. In the seventh tier, Karma Yoga, also known as Karma Marga, is a fundamental spiritual path in Hinduism that focuses on the yoga of action. It is one of the four classical paths alongside Jnana Yoga knowledge, Raja Yoga meditation, and Bhakti Yoga devotion to a personal god. For a karma yogi, right action is considered a form of prayer. This path emphasizes unselfish action and teaches that individuals should act in accordance with dharma, ethical duty, without attachment to the outcomes or personal consequences of their actions. The Bhagavad Gita is a sacred Hindu text, explains that karma yoga purifies the mind and leads one to consider the dharma of work, performing tasks as a dedication to a higher purpose, often described as doing God's work. According to Bhagavad Gita, Karma Yoga is the practice of selfless action performed for the benefits of others. It is a path to spiritual liberation moksha through work. The key principles include rightful action, detachment from results, dedication to duty, and maintaining neutrality towards success or failure. In Hinduism, this concept is also known as Siva, meaning selfless service to others as a form of spiritual practice. Karma Yoga does not require the forfeiture of emotions or desires. Instead, it encourages actions driven by equanimity, balance, and dispassion, avoiding one-sidedness, fear, craving, and extreme reactiveness. A Karma Yogi performs their duty without seeking personal fame, privilege, or financial rewards, considering it a dedication to a higher power. The Bhagavad Gita emphasizes that both renunciations, sannyasa, and Karma Yoga are paths to liberation, but it recommends Karma Yoga for its focus on dedicated selfless action. The text highlights the importance of action without attachment to results, as this leads to spiritual empowerment and fulfillment. In summary, Karma Yoga is a path of spiritual growth through selfless action emphasizing ethical conduct, detachment from outcomes, and a dedication to one's duty for the benefit of others.
The Yuga Sutras of Patanjali is an ancient guide to Yuga theory and practice consisting of around 195 or 196 aphorisms compiled by the sage Patanjali in India during the early century CE. His teachings are renowned for outlining the eight elements of Yuga practice called Ashtanga leading to the ultimate goal of Samadhi or absorption. The eight elements cover principles like abstinences and observances, Yuga postures, breath control, withdrawal of the senses, concentration, meditation and absorption. According to the sutras, the main purpose of yoga is to achieve kaivalya, discerning pure consciousness purusha, separate from the cognitive apparatus prakriti. Rooted in Samkhya philosophy, the sutras share connections with Buddhism. They are considered foundational in classical yoga philosophy, though their influence diminished for centuries before a revival in the late 19th century, led by figures like Swami Vivekananda. Debates surround the authorship and dating of the yoga sutras, traditionally attributed to Patanjali. Scholars question whether this is the same Patanjali, known for a text on Sanskrit grammar, with dating estimates ranging from around 400 CE to as early as the 2nd century BCE. The sutras amalgamates various traditions, combining elements from eight limb yoga and action yoga. Patanjali is seen as synthesizing ideas from Samkhya, Yoga, Vedanta and ascetic traditions in ancient India. Accompanied by the Yoga Bhashya commentary traditionally attributed to Vyasa, the Yoga Sutras cover Samadhi, Absorption, Sadhana practice, Vibhuti, power or manifestation, and Kaivalya, isolation or liberation. Metaphysically, the Sutras align with Samkhya, positing a dualism of Purusha consciousness and Pakriti mind and matter. The ultimate goal is liberation from suffering through discriminative discernment. Epistemologically, Patanjali's system relies on direct perception, inference, and verbal testimony. References to Ishvara, a personal but inactive deity, distinguish it from the non-theistic Samkhya school. In essence, the Yuga Sutras of Patanjali serve as a guide to achieving self-awareness, freedom, and liberation through systematic yoga practices and discerning wisdom. The synthesized teachings from Samkhya incorporate elements of devotion to Ishvara, show parallels with Buddhism and Jainism and have experienced periods of obscurity and resurgence throughout history impacting contemporary yoga philosophy especially in the West. In the last year, Kriya Yoga involves various levels of breathing exercises, pranayama, chanting of mantras and hand gestures mudra. Its goal is to accelerate spiritual development and achieve a deep state of tranquility and connection with God. Lahiri Mahasaya, who claimed initiation from Mahavatar Babaji in the Himalayas around 1861, revived this ancient yoga system. The term Kriya means action or right, and Kriya Yoga is described as a union with the infinite through specific actions. It focuses on controlled breathing techniques to harness life force prana and recharge the body's cells. The ultimate aim is to achieve a breathless state and a connection with God. The practice was reintroduced to the world by Paramahansa Yogananda through his book Autobiography of a Yogi and his efforts in the West starting from 1920. The origins trace back to Lahiri Mahasaya who learned Kriya Yoga from Havatar Babaji and spread it throughout India. Kriya Yoga involves a guru-disciple relationship and initiation is done through a secret ceremony. The practice includes directing life energy along the spine's six centers corresponding to the 12 signs of the zodiac. According to Yogananda, it leads to the purification of blood, revitalization of the brain and spinal centers, and conscious control of life force. The concept of Kriya Yoga is mentioned in ancient scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita and the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. It is considered a powerful method for spiritual evolution with roots in ancient traditions and a focus on breath control and meditation. The lineage of Kriya Yoga according to Yogananda includes Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahasaya, Sri Yukti Swargiri and himself forming a spiritual succession. Siddha Yoga is a spiritual path founded by Swami Muktananda, centered on self-realization and drawing teachings from Eastern philosophies, including Vedanta and Kashmir Shaivism. The tradition encompasses various yogic texts, such as the Bhagavad Gita. Guru Mai Chidvila Sananda is the current head. Ashrams and meditation centers worldwide offer places to learn and practice Siddha Yoga with prominent locations in India and the United States. Siddha Yoga means perfected yoga and was adopted by Muktananda to describe a comprehensive path that includes Jnana, Karma, Raja and Bhakti Yogas. The practices aim to help seekers touch the inner mystical state and attain oneness with God. Siddha Yoga meditation involves focusing on a mantra like Om Namah Shivaya, chanting group meetings, satsang, and selfless service Siva are integral to Siddha Yoga. Shaktipat, the descent of divine power through initiation by the Guru, is a central element. Siddha Yoga observes Hindu holidays, celebrates birthdays and anniversaries of spiritual figures, and engages in humanitarian initiatives. Muktananda's leadership 
Fellowship expanded Siddha Yoga globally, and after his passing in 1982, Guru Mai became the spiritual leader. Subsequent leadership changes led to the formation of splinter groups. Controversies, including allegations against Moksananda, have been raised, and Siddha Yoga's transition to online dissemination occurred in response to global events, increasing accessibility. That's it, as you can see there was a lot of infos, so I will appreciate you a lot if you used like and comment, let me know what your favorite yoga practice is, just feel free, you are in a safe place.